please join me in a warm welcome to His Excellency Magisco Valladares Molina. Thank you so much to all of you, and uh, thanks to Dr. Mark uh, Dunfield and the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy. I think it's uh, an important Congress, and uh, I'm not an, an expert on migration, but I would like to, I, I will try to do my best. I'm a little bit shy after uh, hearing Mr. Mor Morgan, an expert in uh, public law. I am going to uh, speak to you about migration, and especially migration in Guatemala. Excuse me, Excuse yes, me. we have to use this microphone okay. so you can be heard. Okay, thank you. Why migration in Guatemala and where to? Guatemalans have lived migration in both directions. Since America was discovered by Europeans, Europeans came to Guatemala, first, first as conquerors, and then joined by colony officers and Spanish people migrants, who came to the places where Spain had already settled, intending for future, most of them thinking at the beginning that they would come back soon or later to their homeland. A big difference with migration that, took, that could, took place from England to the United States of America, while migrants in this case left the ancien regime with the intention of not coming back again. They went to America with their families, looking for freedom, decided to remain and build a different way of life, their own. Different intentions conducted to different results. Other kind of migration took place in the early days of America. Could it be called migration when forced by violence? Africans were taken as slaves and brought to America, to both English America and Spanish America, and they remain in America first in the condition they were brought, as slaves, and then after centuries of slavery as free citizens. After independence, many Europeans from different countries came to Guatemala. Migration forced by circumstances. Hunger and poverty were left by migrants, Spanish, Italians, Belgians, trying to reach a new world of opportunities. Such as the United States of America was very open to receive European mig migrants, so we were. We received migrants from Middle East and Asia, too. We were an open society for migrants, and in our case, to a certain extent, we still are. Migration of Guatemalans toward other countries. There was not migration of Guatemalans toward other countries, not before the last century, at the 1960s. Migration especially takes place toward the United States of America, our very neighbor in the north, but Mexico. Different reasons made Guatemalan migrate from the countryside to the cities in the same Guatemala, as well and especially to Guatemala City. One of the main reasons was insecurity because of an internal armed conflict that added to internal causes was fed by the silent fight that took place during the Cold War between the Soviet Union and the United States of America. The Soviet Union, through Cuba, fed local insurrection against different governments in Latin America to replace them with the revolutionary governments, communist ones. The, only, the conflict began in Guatemala in the year of 1962, the 13th of November, and did not end till 1996, the 29th of December, 1996. 36 years 
of armed conflict, of a civil war, not declared. Some communities, even as a whole, move themselves to Mexico. Consequences of climate change began to move Guatemalan population to safer, safer places as insecurity had begun to do. Insecurity that is generated after the conflict because of violence generated by organized crime, feed by drug traffic. Not opportunities to live in acceptable social and economic conditions led many Guatemalans to migrate to the city and to the north, the United States of America. More than a million of Guatemalans have migrated to the United States of America and they are living at the United States of America. Only a few have obtained citizenship. What to do? Nobody leaves paradise. So it seems that it is necessary maybe not to build a paradise, Guatemala is a natural paradise, but something like it, including safety and the opportunity to work and reach acceptable conditions to live in the natural paradise, Guatemala is. A migrant is not a migrant anymore if he gets integration in the city or the country he migrates. Integration does not mean, however, to renounce to their own culture, but to be accepted respectfully by the host, with the host culture and institutions. There were many illegal migrants in Panama, especially Colombian and Nicaraguans, for example, and the decision of President Martinelli government was to integra integrate them, to give them the, give them the opportunity of a an identity card, a driver's license, a social security number, and better of all, the chance to pay taxes, the best way of reaching recognized rights. Why the acceptance of illegal migration by countries that, ac that accept illegal migration even though they don't admit to be doing, doing so? Because they need special young people to work in their economies. Without a young population of their own or a not willing young population to do certain jobs, the harder and the most humble of them. Guatemalans go illegally to the United States of America because it is not easy, not to say impossible, to migrate legally. And because we don't find jobs even as illegals and we do find jobs because we do find jobs, even as illegals. In other words, America's economy needs of illegal workers, and illegal migration has been tolerated. Legalize illegals is not an easy decision, and it would go against the rights of people of countries that are invaded by illegal migration and get to be forced to accept and integrate illegal migrants. In any case, illegal migrants must be treated, respected, as the human beings they are. What to do against illegal migration? Countries that do not want to have external migration must understand that they are going to have it if they do not have a young population willing to do all kind of works and in an enough number to do them. If they do not want to have a young migrant population legalized and paying taxes and contributions to make a possible, to make possible pension for the old population, they must have a young population of their own to do so. If they do not want to have illegal migration, they must create conditions to make legal migration possible. If they have illegal migration settled already in their country, they have to think about integration or dismiss. Provisional programs to let legal migration be are developed in the United States and Canada. Workers may come to work for periods of six months, nine months, a year, and then they must go back. 
help other countries to create conditions that do not force the population to migrate. It is to help them, yes, but in an own benefit also, and perhaps assuming a responsibility about those conditions, responsibility about consequences of climate change and drug traffic. What to do against legal and illegal migration in countries whose population is migrating? Create conditions that does migration not necessary. Why there is safety in their own in their in their, in their own countries and the opportunity to earn in their own countries a life of quality. I would like to conclude. Migration has always been. We have to remember, it is incredible, but we forget that human beings are the ones who migrate, not inanimate things. Migration must be seen with the respect it reserves. Human rights of human beings are the same rights no matter the place they are. Migrants do have the same human rights domestic people have, no matter where they are. Not the state, not the international community, not any international convention gives human rights to human beings. They do have those rights because of mankind, not because of a state recognition or a con international convention recognition. In the present year of 2011, the month of October included, Guatemala has received from Guatemalan migrants 3,605 57 million US dollars, American dollars. And comparing the first 10 months of 2010 with these first 10 months of 2011, quantities are not decreasing, but growing. So we expect to receive over 4,200 million US American dollars at the end of the year. That quantity is half of Guatemalan proposed government budget for the year of 2012. There are countries that might be very pleased receiving money sent by migrants that went to other countries to work. That is not our case. Remesas, as we call them, are welcome, but they are not a goal. Our goal is to create conditions that permit all Guatemalans to live in their own country safe and with the quality of life they deserve. We don't have any more an internal armed conflict. But every year, as Penelope, we see destroyed because of the consequences of climate change a lot of what we constructed the year before. We do not have an internal armed conflict anymore, but we suffer of insecurity because of violence generated by organized crime fed by narco traffic. Guatemalans wouldn't, would not be great if we get to have a safe country, if Guatemalans find the possibility to live in Guatemala with a good life quality. Nobody would migrate to the United States if not work would not to be defined in the United States. When I came to UK, I found many children everywhere. I came from Italy and Spain I was ambassador to the Vatican for seven years. And it was quite difficult to find children in, Sp in Spain streets or Italian streets. Well, I thought this is the kind of a country, I mean UK, that might always have enough young people not to need ever the work of migrants. It's a policy and a decision of state. Sometimes you do decisions of states, thinking of the next two years, three years, and not thinking about the next 20 years. I would not like to finish these words without thinking how migration is a factor of movement and innovation in societies. It is not a threat, but 
an opportunity. It all depends on attitude and administration. We cannot see it only because of economic consequences. Human beings are the migrants, not inanimate things. And I would like to end with this. Because of the name of uh, our conference, Immigration and Integration in an Age of Austerity, well, the first thing uh, people do think when an economic crisis, I mean in, a, in a, an enterpriser, he will think about cutting publicity. Not more publicity, we have problems, so we have to cut the publicity budget. And maybe many don't understand that doing so is the best way not to sell their products, maybe. So the first thing that we could think in an austerity moment no more migrants. We don't need them. It's an austerity moment. We don't, don't need them. And maybe it could be a big uh, mistake. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very interesting speech. Um, does anybody have any questions? Yes, at the back. Yes, um, maybe to speak about drug trafficking is, is, is uh, better to speak before about money. Uh, drug trafficking is a matter of money. And uh, drug trafficking exists because drugs are illegal. With uh, legal, legalized drugs, there would be no drug trafficking. So, the ones who do the decision that uh, th that uh, drugs must be forbidden. Must be very aware that uh, they are uh, originating drug trafficking and the uh, black market and all what that black market do does. When a kilo of coca, cocaine, leaves uh, the south of America, I mean Bolivia, Peru, or Colombia and arrives to Central America, it, co it could cost about uh, $1,500, maybe $2,000 a kilogram. When it passes through Central America, Guatemala is in Central America, we are not producers, we are not consumers, but we are in the, in the wrong place, okay? So uh, it would end the Central American road just ready to give the big jump to the United States, it would cost about $9,000. Well, in the New York market, a good cocaine kilogram would cost $106,000. Okay. So it's almost impossible to fight against drug traffickers for our countries. And uh, the money doesn't go back to our countries. It remains in the United States and in other countries. A Baroness once here at the, uh, at the Chamber of the Lords told me she had had the opportunity to go to uh, Guatemala and that she had seen uh, drug consumers in, in jail because it's penalized in very bad conditions and he had seen she had seen a drug trafficker in prison but with great uh, quality of life paid by the drug traf trafficker and I told her that maybe I felt the same when I visited the United States uh, marginal uh, areas to see people uh, uh, drug consumers especially in the south, especially in the African population, black population. And uh, 
But I didn't see really the, uh, the drug trafficker because I think they are in the big, big buildings in a beautiful, beautiful uh, apartment and sending their children to beautiful, wonderful schools and maybe just doing banking uh, business. Uh, I think that all this thing has to be uh, thought again. Um, President Obama of the United States said that it was fair to think about other solutions, even legalizing drugs. He is not promoting that, but it's fair to begin to think about it. And that would be, uh, I had to say all this to give you the, an, an answer. Uh, the problem of uh, drug trafficking, of drugs, is that there is too much money. And they are really the uh, who run all organized crime, not only drug trafficking, but it is fitted by drug trafficking. And that's really a threat ag against our, our governments, or against our societies. And we have a lot of violence because of, the, of, of, of this and a lot of insecurity. One of the causes, many water balance live the water live the Guatemala paradise, Guatemala is, and have to go uh, to the United States trying to work there. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, Mr. Ambassador, it's a well-known fact that uh, if we talk about the Iran Contra tobacco, that um, the United States government with this agency, the CIA, was involved in drug trafficking. I know firsthand, because I'm from Detroit, and through all the black communities and brown communities and poor white communities in America, it's been proven that the uh, CIA has been bringing drugs into the community since Iran-Contra. And not to forget my own experience as a Vietnam veteran with heroin coming from the Golden Triangle being shipped on American military planes into America. Now, that's a big contradiction. So when we talk about trying to eradicate the drug traffic trade and drug c consumption, um, how can we do that when we have the secret uh, services of governments involved in the trafficking themselves? Yes, uh, th there is too, too much money involved. It's too much money involved. That's why uh, someone thought that uh, to fight against drugs was to, uh, the way to do it was to forbid drugs, to prohibit drugs, and to combat the effort, and even the consume. But that's not the way of, uh, of uh, in, in my opinion, the, the, the right way to combat drugs. That's maybe combating, uh, to combat drug trafficking. Okay, but that's, that's an effect, it's not a cause. If you want to combat drugs, you have to speak about education. You have to think, uh, think of uh, many, many other things. It's not a police model. And uh, I, I would say that uh, there's a lot of cor corruption uh, in the combat against drugs because of the, all the money is involved in it. That, that would be my opinion. When I say about legalization, it's not, uh, it's not as easy as that. I mean, it's, it's a complex matter. Uh, it's a complex problem. It doesn't, uh, uh, complex problems cannot do have uh, uh, easy solutions. What I do say is that it's, it's, it's necessary to begin to think in other ways to combat drugs and uh, to realize that uh, with the, 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 the prohibition, there's always going to be drug trafficking. And people that are in, uh, in, uh, in, 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 in the, how do you say, the, the, skur, the, the, oh, the shadow part of the, of, 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 of the, of, of, of the intimacy, okay, will try to do easy money with, with, with drugs. Uh, 
to end drug traffic is not a solution for violence because people, this kind of people, nobody's a delinquent. Circumstances does, do, do, do delinquents. Well, but they will change uh, uh, and they will go to kidnap, kidnapping or they will go to another uh, kind, of, uh, kind of things. But the problem is that now all that organized crime is fitted by the most easiest way of doing money, big, big money. And that's drugs. Thank you very much. Um, we just have time for one more question. Would you have time for one more question? Yes, certainly. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador. I'm really happy that you made this talk, especially because I'm a PhD student researching undocumented migrants in the US and focusing on Latin American youth who have grown up in the United States. Uh, because the United States produces this system where they can live and thrive to a certain extent, but then actually don't have the ability to reach rights. And, and I'm also interested in how they're, they're described um, by the government. And there's a movement now saying that we need to drop the I word drop illegal from describing these people because no person, no human being can actually be illegal. Um, so I was wondering if you can comment on the Guatemalan context, how the government describes people who migrate or emigrate um, without papers, without documents, or perhaps with visas, and then overstay them, and how that fits in with that campaign um, and human rights. Yes, uh, first of all, I, would, I am very proud to say that uh, Guatemalans that uh, get sent back to uh, to Guatemala from the United States, they, I would say that 99.9% .9 would be sent because they are illegal migrants, not delinquents, not because they have uh, uh, done a felony or something like that in the United States. So are people that uh, are working in the United States, and we are hard workers. Guatemalans. So, um, as I would say, uh, I think that uh, the United States should do a, a decision, but uh, an honest decision, because they do need our workers, and they tolerate their, their work, their, our workers, but they don't legalize them. They don't have the, the, they don't decide what to do, and they should decide. We spoke about temporary works, and it sounds uh, well, and uh, there are some programs that have done, done it quite well. But we do forget that uh, we, human beings, are not, we are not inanimate things. So we go for three months, or six months, maybe, and we get involved in love with somebody. <laughs> and, and many things happen to a human being. So it's quite uh, difficult, you know, to uh, uh, do the rules in this matter. It's a, a human conduct, what we are uh, uh, regulating. And, to, and, and I would like to say something again. Some countries think, as in a party, that all the invited people have, have, have already come. So we don't need anyone more. We are complete. Well, if that's the, the idea, well, I think you, you would have to respect it. Because there's a right of uh, people to be in their own uh, country, and maybe they don't want any more, any, anyone else to be there. But what is terrible is that hypocrisy. They are not uh, complete. They need uh, workers. They let them in. They don't legalize them. And they administrate in a very per uh, perverse way uh, immigration. That's all. So thank you very much again. Um, I think we've covered an area today which has been really interesting, very honestly, for many people in the audience today. So once again, thank you very thank much you. for coming. Thank for you. Your time. Thank you.